all. So in today's video, we're going to be learning about sand washes from some of the uh, world's best experts from Brickform. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. You can see some of the particulates there. This will just give you a headache, so it's, it's a good good idea to strain these. I don't know if you can see this, but we got the stencil in there as well. All right, we got Johnny here with the uh, acid etching. All the stamping guys over there took my conical tips. Um, I do like to use a conical tip though just because I can adjust it and I can reach out if I'm on a bigger slab I can reach out a little bit further. But what you're trying to do right now is achieve 100% coverage. If you miss an area, chances are you'll, you'll, you'll never get that, uh, right. that paste off and you'll, you'll see that. You'll have a bald spot right there. I normally go through and spray one coat on here, let it tack up a little bit and then spray it again. Okay. That's all there is to it. So in an ideal world, you will pour first thing in the morning, and then uh, you're going to come back in about five to six hours as the concrete's hydrated, and you'll remove the paste that day. Uh, we don't have that. Would you do that with a power washer or a garden hose? Great, great, uh, great question. Like if I'm you're doing. I'm a huge fan of a power washer for several reasons. A guy can tear up a job pretty bad. Um, he can. You know, you can have streaking in there from north to south or whatever. Right. Um, so if you're doing it same day removal, it's as easy as coming in there with the hose and a broom and it just rinsing it off. Right. Then I'll come back the next day and power wash it. Okay. Uh, just a final rinse. Yep. You know, I've seen where a guy come out there with power washer on on the fresh, and this this could be even stamped concrete if it's green yeah. enough. And the hose is just laying there and vibrating. Yes. You'll we'll see exactly where that was at. Yep. So, uh, if I come back the next day to remove the paste, I'm usually going to use a floor bumper or a swing machine. Okay. And uh, that that works really good. It actually takes the uh, aggregates and, and you're taking them, you know, you're using your advantage and, and getting a nice, even clean over the whole thing. But there's, I'm telling you, there's nothing better than first day removal. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's not going to be possible when it's, you know, 50 degrees out. I mean, it's, it's challenging. You're getting late in the day. Are you yep. better off then pour in the afternoon? Yeah, you can do pour in the afternoon and do it first thing in the morning. Yeah. And you never want to let this go two days. Because that's, that's you know, two two reasons this can, this product can fail. One is you waited too long to put it on, so you missed the window of opportunity. So you will slow the hydration of the product. Two, you wait too long to take it off. If you come back in two or three days to try to get the paste off, it's way too late. You know, so as long as you know, 80 degrees, 85, 90 degrees, pour first thing in the morning, come back after the concrete's hydrated, and remove it with a broom and a hose, and you're good to go. It's so simple. You know, you're, you're going to make it harder on yourself when you come back the next day, unless it's you know cooler temperatures. Did you get caught? Good question. Yeah. Normally wouldn't cover this up at all unless you have rain coming in. If it's going to rain, uh, let this tack up as long as it can, and then cover it with a thin mill, mill and try to lay it as flat as you can. If you have a bunch of creases in here and a bunch of bubbles in here, that concrete's going to turn different in those areas, and you can get some variation in your uh, exposure. 
So when you go to spray that, basically it's just like when, where you showed us, you just want to be able to scratch the top a little bit with your finger and it still be a little I, bit I juicy on the top. I moisture in there. Yeah. I, I still want it to be creamy. Yeah. You know, with, if you're doing the white, you can wait even a little bit longer. Okay. You know, you're, you're, uh, you're not taking off as much paste. Yeah. Yeah. Trying yeah. to speak to the tightness of the finish versus... Yeah, the we, we, we kind of went over that earlier. Like, if you're doing a heavy exposure, you know, you don't have to come in there and get it with steel. You know, I, I usually just bull float it and mag it once or, you know, once or twice. When, you know, right. When you mag it, and then I'll spray it. As soon as I get done magging, I'm going to spray it. I don't want to wait too long. Right. Uh, same thing with the lighter edges, too. But I'm going to you know, get any time I'm doing or 01 or 03, 05. Those are lighter exposures. I want to do a better job of finishing, get rid of all your chatter marks. Um, this, this is pretty good here for the, uh, for the depth that we're going to exposed here. I mean, I can see a little bit of chatter marks, but we won't see that when we remove the, uh, the paste. Now I'm just going to hit it again to make sure I got 100% coverage and I didn't miss anything. If you're really good, you can do it in one shot, but I can see over here, I'm a little bit light in this area here, so I want to spray a little bit more. Can you over apply it? You can't really over apply it, but, you know, if you get on there too soon and you're on a light edge, you got to worry about your, your tip and you're leaving a stream on here. You can burn into the concrete and right. you can see it. So, um, that, that's been why I like using a conical tip because I can avoid all that. Okay. All right, you know, clean it off first thing in the morning and, you know, if you're going to seal it, you got to do a really good job of cleaning it off. Um, okay. You know, I will come back and, and hit it with the power, you know, power washer to get all that off because there's so much sand yes. in here that yep. sits on top. When it's wet, it looks nice and clean. Yes. And, and then it's dry. Uh, you know, when it dries up, yep. you'll see uh, the paste that's still yep. on there that you didn't remove. Um, another reason why I like to acid etch these. Yeah. All right, I'm good over there. On to the next thing, guys. So yesterday. You guys poured the slab, we put the dimension stencil in there, and then uh, uh, towards the end, we put the uh, surface uh, select edge um, violet down here. That's a real life. Um, so, like Johnny was talking yesterday, it's it's really best to wash these the same day, these lighter etches. Um, but because this concrete was setting so slow, we're not going to have a problem washing it today. Uh, with lower temperatures, it's always good. And again, I think Johnny went over this yesterday. You put this on, you want to make sure that you get a good hide coat, let it dry out, put a second coat on, make sure that you got good coverage. That way you don't have any bald spots. Um, if it's going to rain and you have to cover it, we want to make sure this is dry first. Um, and, and take the things off as soon as you can because, you know, plastic wrinkles and we get moisture in some areas and dry spots and that will affect the wash off. Um, ideally, uh, you know, if you've, if you've got material that's harder to, harder to get off, a rotary floor scrubber with a nylon bristle brush attachment works really well. Very quick and efficient way to take it off. Uh, pressure washer, you can do that, but you've got to be careful because if you're doing a wand, you can actually gouge the material and get a heavier edge and you'll see the streak. So you've got to be very careful uh, removing the stuff. Today, this is very soft. I did a little corner earlier in this, earlier when we first got out here. This is not going to take much So the softer, the least intrusive way uh, to get this product off, the better. Um, so we'll just start. It's not rocket science. I'm sure a lot of you guys have done this already using uh, brand X or whatever, or using our select edge or our old surface deactivator product. But, uh, but this should come off pretty easy and you'll see this is how ours works, just like the others. You know, one, one thing I didn't mention yesterday though, um, it, it's always good, you know, at the end of your pour to leave a little leftover on the side right there. Cause that, that'll tell you, uh, you know, when you're ready to take this off. Again, I like to take it off on the same day, you know, so if, if, if I pour in the morning and I come back four or five hours later, I'm going to take that leftover concrete there and I'm, I'm going to finish that the same way I finish everything else. And I'm going to, that'll be the area that I start taking the material off first. And then I know I'm ready to get on the rest of the slab right there. So it's, it's, you know, if you take more off than you anticipated, you, you can't reverse that. All right. So, 
first we're you know we're gonna get out of here with a you know a soft bristle broom make sure we're not taking too much off and we're just gonna scrub it in and see what we have and i'm pretty happy with that right there i don't i don't even know if i need to get a stiffer broom It's definitely a tough thing. Some guys are stripping this, or some guys are washing off the same day in the afternoon. Sometimes when you get concrete like this, you do it two days later. Don't don't do it two yeah. days later. No, but I mean, it's, it's some, a lot of guys are doing it that afternoon, depending on what I yeah. and, and what the concrete is like. So, do you suggest um, scrubbing before you pull the stencil out? Yeah, we're cleaning the stencil yes. right now, and then. Okay. Yep. Yes. That'll help. That'll help uh, the spalling when you pull it. That's correct. It'll it'll get that paste broken off of there. And plus, and then you're cleaning the stencil cleaning too. The stencil. Was there microfibers in this? Yes. Okay. Oh, yep. yes. The top's already it's already hydrated. Or the other thing is, guys, way too long. To, so I can't I can't I can't do it. Can't work it off. Or guys, wait too long to come back. And, you know, when they come back to remove it, they wait too long. So. For this product to work correctly, you still need moisture at the top. Now, if, if I'm going to do a you know a heavy exposure, let, let's say I, I want to show full rock, right? right? We'll come in here, we'll full float it, maybe hit it with the mag a couple times, and then it spray it on immediately after that. I don't, I don't really, really need to wait. You know, I and, and, and it happens, guys. So if, if I come in here and I see that there's some paste on here. I can take I can take some uh, a rubbing stone or eat, you know sometimes even a little bit of hydrochloric acid and uh, you know edge that up a little bit to get rid of that paste. But on these sand finishes, if you don't get all the paste off and, and you don't you don't pay attention to that and you come back here and put a an acrylic sealer on here, it's gonna stick out like a sore thumb. Right. You'll you'll see that paste on there. So. Uh, do a good job of cleaning, and that's that's where uh, you know John mentioned the floor scrubber, the swing buffer. If I'm coming back the next day, that's my best friend, you know, because you're going to take the aggregates and you know, use them to your advantage to you know to clean this. And uh, what's the stencil like called again? Contracting. Uh, it's called Dimensions. I had to drive by Solomon Colors every you know every time I went to my distributor. Yeah. <laughs> Lights are perfectly done.